Hello, hi, you're welcome. It's Henry the computer guy. And actually, you're welcome to our lesson number 28. And in today's lesson, we are actually beginning our chapter 2. And we saw this one in our table of content. And we say that it's going to be computer hardware and system startup. If someone talks of computer hardware, what comes into your mind? If you have ever used a keyboard, if you have ever used a mouse, if you have ever used a monitor, anything that is physical and tangible computer related, we call those ones computer hardware. So in short, computer hardware are specifically those physical or tangible components of a computer. You can touch them and feel them. They can be either input, whereby they help us to enter data into a computer. They can be processing, whereby they help us to convert data into information, for example, the CPU. They can be storage, which specifically help us to retain or keep our data, for example, the flash disk, the hard disk. They can be communication, which help two or more computers to communicate to one another. They can be output, whereby these ones help us to display the processed data or information to the user. For example, we can have the monitor, we can have the projector and others. So below here, we are having a diagram of some of the computer hardwares that we have. He told us that this one is a printer and it's specifically an output device. What do we use it for? To make printouts on paper. Remember, information printed on paper is a hard copy. It is in form that is tangible and we can use it without power. It becomes tangible. So it is information in a hard form and it is produced by a printer. We have another one here, we have a scanner. A scanner is an input device, whereby it helps us to change something which is in form of a hard copy to something which is going to be a soft copy. You have a picture you want to send to your friend, it is in hard copy, you scan it, then send it as a soft copy. We have an external hard disk, and this is categorized as storage. It helps us to keep data. For example, if it is inside the computer, it is internal. Hard disk, if it is outside, it is an external. But all of them do help us to keep or store data. Then we have memory cards, and these ones are termed as storage or categorized as storage. They retain or keep our data. We have the card reader. It's the one that we use and put in our memory cards to transfer our data either from one computer to another. We have the flash disk and it is storage. We can use it to store data, keep our files there. We have a modem and this is specifically categorized as communication. It helps to or more computers to communicate to one another. We have a microphone. It is termed as input because it helps us to enter sound into a computer. We have a keyboard helping us to enter characters into the computer. It is also input. We have a mouse used to make selections onto our screen and it is also input. We have speakers to help us to hear sound and it is categorized as output. We have our webcam and it is categorized as input. Remember, it captures the picture of someone or takes some pics. It can even send the live stream of someone, let's say on a computer at that moment over the internet. Then we can have a, a screen. It is also output because it helps us to display the items that are produced by the computer or processed. Then we have the system unit and this one is categorized under the processing. Remember inside the system unit, we have the processor which is the central processing unit or the brain of the computer. We can have the memory there, for example, the random access memory, the RAM. 
We can have the storage devices, for example, the hard disk, it can be found inside here if it is internal. So hard disk, it is storage. Then we can also have where we can, let's say, insert our CDs and DVDs. And the CD or DVD, it is also storage. That means that they help us to retain information. Then we have some portable media players and it is also output. We can use it to put some songs there, then start watching them. So it is categorized as output. So those are uh, some of the items that we are going to be actually looking at in our lesson. So they are telling us that computer hardware and systems start up. Before we talk about them, we have to look at some of the keywords we are to talk about in this lesson, which is hardware. And we have said that these are specifically the physical or the tangible components of a computer. We have software. These are programs or sets of instructions that do tell a computer what to do. Remember, it is like a computer system. The hardware alone cannot do everything. It needs the software to direct it to do something. You have your, let's say you have your printer, you have your computer, they are connected, but how are you going to tell the printer that I need a print out? You have to use the software, then put a task there, then you order the printer to do something using the software. We shall talk about a device, and we say that these are specifically those electronic components we shall be calling them devices then we shall talk about what we call the booting the starting of a computer at times we call it the booting then we shall talk about the peripherals remember peripherals are external components attached to a computer we can have a printer we can have a scanner keyboard so anything that is attached to the computer from outside or the system unit connected to the system unit. It is what we call the peri peripheral device. Then look at the objectives. What we or what are we supposed to get out of this lesson or chapter? So they are telling us that by the end of this chapter, you should be able to know the physical devices of a computer system and how each operate. You have to know how a keyboard operates you have to know for example how a mouse operates you have to know how a scanner operates you have to know how a printer operates mentioned by the few we shall also look at how we can assemble a computer system we have all these different components the keyboard the mouse and others we have to know how we can completely assemble all of them to make a computer work Safely start and shut down a computer system. So we shall look at how all the procedure we can use to start up a computer and how to shut down the computer without actually losing any of our data and information. And lastly, we shall use computer peripheral tools. For example, we shall use a printer and get out a printout. We shall use a scanner. We shall use a keyboard, mouse, and others mentioned but a few. Let's continue. So we have an introduction here. And they're telling us that in this chapter, you will learn about the physical parts of the computer and their uses in everyday life. For example, how do we use a keyboard? How do we use a mouse? How do we use a CD? How do we use a hard disk? How do we use a flash disk? How do we use a memory card? So we are going to be looking at how we can use them. Different parts of a computer are assembled to make up a complete system. That means that if someone talks of a computer, it is not just only one component. We combine different components to come up with a computer. For example, if it is a desktop, we're going to need a monitor. We shall need a keyboard, we shall need a mouse, we shall need a system unit. Then connect everything together to make a complete working system. 
These parts may be manufactured by the same company or different companies. That means that one company can manufacture a keyboard, another company can manufacture a mouse. So it doesn't matter whether the mouse I'm having is for Dell and the computer I'm using is HP. So they can be manufactured by different manufacturers or different companies but they will be able to perform the same task or they will be directing us to towards a common goal. Some of the hardware parts are internal components. That means that they are within the system case or the system unit as we are going to be looking at it. While others are peripherals, that means that they are externally connected to the system case through a port. So these are holes that you always see on the outside of a computer. We actually call them ports. And a port is actually a point at which a peripheral attaches to a system unit or a computer. That outlet, for example, you might be having a USB cable. You connect it to that hole. So that hole is the one we actually call a port. And it is a point at which a peripheral attaches to a computer or a system unit. Are we together? So, as a computer user, you should know how to assemble the hardware parts and start at, and safely start the computer. That means that you're supposed to get a keyboard, the mouse, the system unit, the monitor, and connect all of them together to make a complete working system or computer. So if you're new to this channel, please, I beg you to subscribe to my channel and also share the link to those people you think might be in need of this content. So it's been Henry the Computer Guy. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. I sign out.